Welcome to another edition of 4 and 4. My name is Kathy Hallgren and I'm the director of South St. Paul Public Library. This month I have a thriller, a mystery, a love story, and I'm not sure what I'd call it, but it's good. All four of these books are on our new bookshelves at the library. My first book is Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. The main character, Christine, wakes up each morning in a strange place with a strange man by her side. A wild party girl? A victim of time travel? No, a victim of amnesia, or so it seems. But Dr. Nash has come into her life and he urges her to keep a secret diary, which most of the book is, and each day he calls her on a special cell phone to remind her where it is in her closet. As she writes and reads, she begins to remember who she used to be and realizes how controlled and empty her life now is. Dr. Nash warns her not to tell Ben, her husband, that she's meeting with him or keeping a diary. Is Ben really her husband? Did she really have an accident that caused this memory loss? What happened to all her friends? Did she have children? I couldn't wait to find out what really happened, and you won't be able to put it down either. This is one of our Lucky Day books, which is designated by a shamrock. These books are on the shelf above our new books, can be checked out for two weeks, and do not go into the hold queue. Now for our suspense thriller readers, I have Brad Thor's Full Black, which was recommended to me by a library board member. This is the tenth in a series featuring Scott Harvath, a former Navy SEAL who now devotes his life to combating terrorism. The term full black refers to unclassified covert operations that are not traceable, in contrast to black operations, which are top classified assignments. At the crux of this novel is the concept of unrestricted warfare, which is a military strategy that does not deal with typical warfare on a field with weapons, but war in terms of legal or economic demise and the indoctrination of a different worldview on a country. While Harvath is busy trying to infiltrate a terrorist cell in Sweden, Larry Solomon, a movie producer in California, is fighting for his life as Russian hitmen kill whoever they encounter as they go through his house. Larry has been working on a documentary about James Standing, a man who's made a fortune the American way and now is working to bring America to its knees. The odd thing is he's using hedge funds and seemingly benign nonprofit foundations to do it. The book is a wild ride into the world of terrorism and power. I found it fun to see if I could figure out who the real world counterparts were to these fictional characters, and maybe you will too. Heliotrope, devoted affection. Dahlias, dignity. Marigold, grief. Next up is Vanessa Diefenbaugh's The Language of Flowers. In this book, we learn that if you received a certain flower during the Victorian era, it had a specific meaning, and woe to you if you got a yellow rose. The main character is Victoria, a young woman who is finally emancipated at the age of 18 from her foster group home life. She is cut off from society and loves no one since most of her life no one has loved her. The book alternates between her life at nine with a foster mother that truly loved her and her current life at 18 where Victoria is learning to survive and make her way in the world. She eventually lands a job at a local florist and seems to have a way with patrons by making bouquets of specific flowers with meanings that apply to their specific situation. At first, you may be completely incensed with Victoria's behavior toward Elizabeth, one of her foster mothers, but as the book goes along, you'll find yourself rooting for this resilient, brave spirit. This book is a large print copy, and if you can't find a copy of a book in regular type, don't forget to check our large print shelves, because we have many bestsellers there, too. Finally, I'd like to close out this video talk with The Paris Wife by Paula McLean. I was rather dubious when I picked this up, but many library patrons told me how much they enjoyed it, so I thought I'd give it a try, and I'm glad I did. This is the story of Hadley Richardson, a girl from St. Louis, who ends up marrying Ernest Hemingway and moving to Paris with him in the 1920s. I have never been a huge Hemingway fan, but the way he's portrayed in this book, like Hadley, I just might give him another try. As they get caught up in the jazz age in Paris, we're introduced to the likes of Gertrude Stein and our very own F. Scott Fitzgerald. Hemingway is writing his masterpiece, The Sun Also Rises, as Hadley stands by her man in the face of incredible odds and anguish. If you've ever taken a chance on love and fallen for an artist, pour a glass of wine, settle in on the sofa, and read this book. And that's it for this October edition of 4 and 4. See you next month for four more titles in four minutes.